So, pond season's coming to an end here in the UK at the moment. It's definitely had a bit of a cold snap over the last week or so. Why is he talking to us about ponds stood in front of his discus tank? Well, if you saw the last video, the discus are now gone. Don't worry, by gone, I just mean downstairs in the fish room. So I've got the discus down here. Uh, I'm not going to lie, there was a couple of reasons for doing this. The first one was cost. It's much cheaper to keep them down here because they're in a, a room that's heated because this is my fish room, so all my tanks are in here. So I heat the room to make it cheaper to get these up the extra couple of degrees that they like. And I've worked out that the energy savings that I'm making by moving them down here is going to save me roughly £60 a month. And yeah, it's just a no-brainer at that point. And I spend more time in here. I spend all, all my working day is spent in here. My desk's over there, so I get to spend more time with them. I don't spend a lot of time in my hallway. So as much as it was a nice statement art piece, I get to enjoy them more here um, because I spend more time in my office. So we have an empty tank up here with the heater switched off. What to do? Empty tank, pond shutting down. Well, I'll tell you what I did. I spent five minutes in my pond swiping this around and collected I don't know, about 20 goldfish fry of various sizes. But if nothing else, if I show you this, when this was a discus tank, we were running between five and eight kilowatts on a nice day. And as you can see, when I turned the heaters off, oh, you could see, and then when I turned the heaters off, it dropped below one. So mission accomplished in terms of power usage. So in the pond, there was about half a dozen fish I started with, regular old comets to a couple of slightly less regular, and some shabunkins, some lemon goldfish, uh, a couple of different varieties. So they've been in there all summer, all year pretty much. And at one point there was hundreds, if not thousands of fry. It just it looked like it was frog spawn, the amount of fish that were in there. A lot of them obviously didn't make it, but a lot of them did and they're still out there and I don't want to see them perish over winter and I've now got an empty tank. I thought it might be a fun experiment just to have a look at some goldfish, some plain old goldfish and see what we get. In terms of how I'm doing this, like I said, five minutes with this fairground net, just swooshing it through the... <laughs> I can't think of a better way to do it than this. Um, so if you have any better ways, please let me know in the comments that doesn't involve draining the pond. Um, let me know because I think this is just going to be an activity for me and the kids for the next few weeks to go out of a weekend, spend half an hour, see if we can catch some more fry. Missed it. There's there, right in the corner. Yay. Okay, pop it in the bucket. Ooh, uh, that's oh, it's like a koi. <laughs> I just popped it off. So this little backyard pond, this was like the holding point where during the summer we caught all the fry and put them in here, the ones that we could find. So we can just drain this quite easily and get all the smaller ones from this pond, but the bigger pond it's a little bit more challenging as to how to catch them. But we've got a few. This might just be a thing that we do for the next couple of weeks before everything freezes. See if we can get any more out. There's tons, there's tons of them out there. Uh, I always see them and as soon as I come around, they're off. But catch a few, get them in here, get them in the tank and see the different stages of development. And that's the thing that I think is actually quite interesting. Here in the bucket, you can see there's a couple of different sizes in there. There's some different generations, obviously. There are some um, that have coloured up already. I think the general thing that happens is that they're born, and they're all dark, they're born black. Um, oh, I didn't do that zoom, that was the lens. Uh, they're born black, and then as they grow, they start to develop some colour, like this one. And as they grow, and as they feel safer, they start to develop some colour. But some of them were born this colour. There's even some white ones out there, some kind of koi markings, white with red spots. I think I've got one of them in here. But the general thing is they're born black and as they grow up and get bigger and feel safer, they start to develop their colours because obviously they feel a little bit safer, they're not going to get attacked. The dark colouring is it's a camouflage defence mechanism. 
So, in the house setting, in a tank, I wonder what we'll end up with. But, yeah, I can't believe five minutes swooshing the net around has netted me all this. We'll get the first bunch in. I'm really breaking all the rules with acclimation and things like that. The tank, I've done a bit of a deep clean of the tank, but I haven't completely wiped it down, dried it, disinfected it or anything, so... Again, a bit of an experiment. It'll be interesting to see how much of the benef beneficial bacteria will die off in the cold water. <laughs> so that was the, what I was calling red one, but it just does look like a general goldish one. And then here, here's one of the koi, koi looking ones. I mean, it could be that that's one of the, um, let's see if I can zoom this in a little bit. And there's one of the lighter ones in there. I don't know how well that's coming across, but I don't know. That might be one of the shibunkany type wolf fry. Is there some shibunkin in that one? Come on, guys, out you come. Some of them are really quite small. Hopefully they won't end up in the sump. And some of these that are a lot bigger, but still quite dark. That's another, that was a quite a bright one. In terms of setting up the tank, I've left everything quite bare really. I've left the same rocks and wood in there. Um, I've left a couple of the plants. I'm expecting the goldfish will probably eat all the plants, but these the plants looked a bit ratty anyway. Uh, I want to see how they fare with the plants and if they leave them alone then yeah I might plant it up a bit more. Um, some, some of the hardier plants, we might get away with them. But uh, this is just a bit of an experiment. Um, thrift is the, very much the nature of my fish keeping hobby at the moment so when I can get away without spending loads of money I will do so. And it's not costing me any money to stock this tank with these little fish. They wouldn't have survived the winter I don't think. Certainly not all of them, so the more that I can get in here, this is my first winter with my pond, so I don't know how well it will um, cope. It's, in theory, it's deep enough. I don't know whether these fry being so young, they would all have survived. I don't know whether the big ones will survive, but at least this way, if they don't survive outside over the winter, I will have something to stock the pond with next year. And these can all go back out again. I can feed them up, get them good and fat, and then they should be ready for next year. So I've got about 20 or 30 goldfish fry in there of various colours and types. An interesting experiment to do over the winter to see what goes on. Um, I'm going to take a couple of the pond plants in here as well. Make, make sure that they last through the winter as well. I think this is going to be interesting enough just for the year. Whether we keep it like this or we go with some other kind of cold water or temperate fish and build something a bit more themed than just... It is basically a holding tank for the goldfish fry, but... I'm excited to see what happens over the winter. If you are, click that subscribe button and you'll get updates as we get them and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.